Welcome to episode 88 of Stage Worthy. I'm your host, Phil Rickaby. Stage Worthy features conversations with Canadian theatre makers, from actor to director to playwright and more. If you're listening for the first time and you like what you hear, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the podcast. You can find Stage Worthy on Apple Podcasts, Google Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. And whether you're a new listener or you've been listening for a while, please consider leaving a comment or rating. Your ratings and comments help new listeners find the show. And if you want to drop me a line, I would love to hear from you. You can find Stageworthy on Facebook and Twitter at Stageworthy Pod, and you can find the website at stageworthypodcast.com. My guests this episode are Amanda Cordner, Christina Bryson, and director Claire Burns from the Storefront Theatre and the Red One Theatre Collective's presentation of Divine, on now with the 2017 edition of the Summerworks Festival in Toronto. So can I just have everybody uh, say their names and what they're doing in, in the play? It's Divine? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So if everybody could take a turn. Yes. Amanda Cordner, and I will be playing Penn. Okay. I'm Claire Burns. I'm directing. I'm Christina Bryson, and I'm playing Marion. And what is, what is Divine about? Okay. Well, Divine, <laughs> the post-apocalypse, post-apocalyptic Western... Um, it takes place in an Ontario without water, and it follows the story of the last diviner, somebody who can oh. find water, like divining uh, water. And she, uh, played by Amanda, is being hunted by these scavengers and also by an evil preacher mm-hmm. who's hell-bent on revenge. Revenge? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, is it giving way too much to no. ask what revenge, what kind of revenge? It will. Yeah, yeah. we can. Okay, okay. <laughs> we can. <laughs> we can. But think of it as like Mad Max meets the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. All right, all right. Yeah, That's it's good. all That's women good. in the cast and nice. crew and everything like that. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. entirely women. Yes. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We don't get that very often. No, we not at all. Yeah. Often. A lot of dudes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of dudes. Especially full with Westerns. Yeah, especially with Westerns. Yeah, totally. And it's. Uh, a while back, I was talking with Sex T Rex, and they did a, a western. You know, they did Watch mm-hmm. a Wildcat, and that entirely came from the fact that um, uh, Caitlin couldn't think of a like what was a western heroine, and yeah. those don't don't happen very often. So, yeah. where can you, where did the play come from? So that's uh, so the play came from the mind and imagination of Natalie Frigia. Mm-hmm. And uh, she is a playwright, and she's also doing her PhD in theater and environmental studies. Mm. So the play really marries this um, important issue of water conservation and sustainability with this like overtly theatrical mm. genre of the Western. Mm-hmm. So it came from her mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was a part of the storefront playwright unit mm-hmm. last year. Um, that was curated by Emma Mackenzie Hillier. And so they, we had a week of sort of a festival of having a reading every night. And then this play was chosen to get fully produced. Mm-hmm. Were any yeah. of you involved in that initial reading? Yes, I was. <laughs> yeah. Were you really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Did you play the same role? Or mm-hmm. you, yeah, nice. Mm, yeah, <laughs> well, I was hoping a year ago, I was like, please, please consider me if this goes to production. Yeah. And I was considered. I auditioned. So I auditioned for it. <laughs> well, you, you you have the advantage of like having like been the first person to say those words. Yes, it's cool. true. It's pretty true. cool. Mm-hmm. Um, we take a second before we talk a whole lot more about, uh, about the play. I'm really curious about uh, everybody's uh, experience in theater. Where? Why did you decide to go into theater? Um, what were your like? What drew you into it? Hmm. Okay. Well, I was a very <laughs> fat kid growing mm-hmm. up, and I was put into every activity you can imagine: mm-hmm. soccer, skating, dance, and I would do it for a short period of time and then give up. And then my mom put me in my first play at ten. And I knew that was where I was supposed to be because even though I was fat and they didn't have costumes that fit me, I played a banker and my suit wouldn't close across my chest and the pants were so tight and I was supposed to be in like a suit. My slacks were supposed to be like slacks. (laughs) So it was super tight and I didn't care. I walked on that stage and... I've been in love ever since. Do you remember what that play was? Yes, Sunshine Sketches of Mariposa. Nice. <laughs> I played Mr. Mullins, the banker. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah. after you just after you did that play, you knew you wanted to do it. Hell yeah. What convinced? Did, did did you take any convincing that you could make that you could do this for a living? Did it take convincing? Like, did was there anybody that said no? You can't do no, it. No, no. Awesome. awesome. My awesome. parents, like, I mean, they're more they're movie buffs. Mm-hmm. My parents. So as soon as they were like, as soon as they, I told them I wanted to be in it. Like, yeah, of course. But I think once I graduated mm-hmm. from university, I went to school. I went to York University for yeah. theater. And then my mom got concerned, <laughs> <laughs> and she was sending me job postings for you know government jobs. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. You know, and then you can do theater on the side. No, mom, stop telling me to do on the side. It will never be on the side. Did that? Did that start? That start after graduation? After university. Through university, she was super like, supportive. Oh, yes, she was there at every show. Like, yeah. Because <laughs> I've talked to people whose parents were always like, you know, they said they wanted they started to go to university. They're like, wouldn't accounting be better? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost never is somebody like gung ho until the graduation. And yeah. actually, pretty recently, last year, I was offered uh, a full. Um, full time um, contract at the Science Center, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was talking to my mom on the phone, and she was like, "That's amazing." My dad came on the phone, and he was like, "Don't you let anything get in the way of your dreams?" Aww, <laughs> dad, <Yes. laughs> I love you. Yes. And I didn't. I refused it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I turned it down. Well, I mean, that's a full time job can be a barrier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I got the acting bug around the same time when I was 10. I was cast as Fagin. In yeah! Production. Oh <laughs> production of Oliver. Um, and I, all through high school. And then when I went to university, I was 19. And I think I was just, I was really intimidated at the audition process. So I actually ended up going to university for history and political science. Cool. Around year two, yeah. I was like, I want to drop out and go to theater school. And my parents were like, never. Like, <laughs> they were like really against it so I finished university doing like a bunch of Hart House I went to U of T so I did a mm-hmm. bunch of shows at Hart House musicals and then after I was done university it was sort of the time when a lot of my other friends that were really close to me were in theater and so then I started to get like jealous and I was just like you know what I cannot be the kind of person who lives with regrets so yeah. I was like I need to try to pursue this so I auditioned for theater school and then I got into George Brown so I went to George Brown for three years and mm-hmm. During that time, also, my parents trying to dissuade me. Um, and, you know, I, my, I bless my mom. But she's told me that I'm her biggest worry in life oh, <laughs> because of my career oh. choice. But everything is fine. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm really happy. I'm, I live and such you're a, brilliant. Thank you. And resilient. I live a charmed and yeah. very um, fulfilling life. So, yeah. When you were at George Brown, were you, was that at the Young Center or was that pre-Young Center? That was at the Young Center. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So part of the reason why I chose to go there was because of its connection with Soul Pepper and the, mm. and the proximity to Soul Pepper. And since then, I've been really um, fortunate to uh, get to know some of the folks at Soul Pepper. Mm. I was also, I, I was running the Storefront Theater for the mm-hmm. last like three and a half years. And so we've done co-productions with those guys there, mm-hmm. which has kind of felt like a, like a coming home to a certain extent because yeah. I'm like, oh, right. back in the building, going going and seeing my old teachers and stuff, but also yeah. as a professional being kind of across the hall. Nice. So it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been really good. I was at George Brown when it was in the old warehouse. Oh, yeah. The old warehouse at King and River. Yeah. So you know George Brown. <laughs> I know George Brown. I know George Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Shit's going down. Shit's going down at George Brown. Anyway, For real? It, well, there's a, a regime change oh. in happening right now. Regime right? change. I, from what I've heard, I mean, I, I mean obviously... Uh, that warehouse was a long time ago, so I was uh, there a long time ago. But, you know, we hear things mm-hmm. um, when we're in our 27th year of uh, being a graduate or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> alumni, you always, yeah. always figure that you're all, like, I remember graduating and I'd be like, yeah, I'm a fifth year now. Because you just, like, go back for stuff, but you, we hear things. Yeah. So, yeah, regime change is probably really important there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of fell into it by accident around the same time, 10 to 12 ish, (laughs) because my little sister was such a imaginative child, (laughs) like super cute, but like living in her own world and like talking to her hands all the time. And like my parents were like, all right, put this kid in drama classes, like, because we went to camps all summer. So Mm -hmm. I randomly went to a musical theater camp because she was going to a similar one. And the rest is history, mm. as they say. Um, so I was doing that, and then I went to, in Ottawa, Canterbury, for arts high school. Mm-hmm. I was doing that all the way through. I loved it. And then at the end, 
when it comes time to apply for university, I got the like, I can't actually like do this. Like, what a silly thing to try to pursue. Mm -hmm. And like, I love it, but let's be realistic. And <laughs> so I went to university for a year at Ryerson for like a general arts and contemporary studies, it's called. And then the year away from it was just like, what? What? Why, yeah, yeah. why yeah. am I not? Like, I had a really good friend on my floor who was in the program. He would talk about it. And, like, I was just like, I want to be doing that. <laughs> yeah. Like, why am I not pursuing what I love and am mm -hmm. good at while I'm, like, young and able to do it, you know? Like, I figured I was smart enough. If, if fallouts fails later, I'll figure something out. Yeah. And then I went to University of Windsor um, for my BFA. And I also took an arts management course on the side to try to balance it out that way and mm. get, get into that side. So I've been producing a little bit with the storefront and with mm -hmm. a company I had for a couple of years also. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a sense of, of what gave you those cold feet at graduation? Like here you were doing this thing that yeah, you loved. You've been I doing don't, it through high school. I don't know. I guess it's just the like, and my parents were super supportive. Like they still have the questions like, oh, is this job paying you? Like, <laughs> are you getting paid for this play? But mm -hmm. they really are supportive mm -hmm. of us following our dreams. So it wasn't really them. It, you just kind of get this cold feet of like, I felt like I had to grow up now. I had to stop oh. doing the like, you know what I mean? You have to yeah. be realistic. Yeah, yeah, you can't do the fun thing all your life. Yeah, like, well, I'm an I'm an adult I got to be an adult now. I got to figure something man. out that's going to make me money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing the theater's so lucrative. Yeah, yeah, and I remember right. my uh, <laughs> my favorite my like teacher in in high school that had a big impact on me. He like wrote in my yearbook he was like whether it's one year or five years i'll be here when you come back oh, like yeah. when you change your mind again then mm. a few months later i'm like what did i do you know? oh. <laughs> yeah um so the storefront um has been i mean so many great things have come out of the storefront mm -hmm. and uh you know and the partnership a few times with, with soul pepper um storefront losing its space um was sort of a blow to the indie theater as, as all of these um, indie spaces keep getting knocked down. Um, obviously, Storefront is still doing things, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, and that, I assume, is going to continue? Yeah, yeah. So we have like a couch crashing season, as we're calling it. <laughs> so summer, uh, starting with Tough Jews, which happened in April, mm -hmm. then the summer work show, um, we are really strongly looking at the possibilities of doing another production of Shaft's Gallery in uh, December. Then we're doing a co-production at Factory in February. Mm. Um, and then we'll be doing uh, what's called the Feminist Fuck It Fest in April, um, which is like a, a, a festival for female created work. I would, I love that name. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I hope no, we don't have to it's a podcast, swear. we can swear all the <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, I would, uh, just for the record, I would see Shaft's Gallery every year and in December, I think it's the next holiday it's classic, cool. honestly. Yeah. It could be, you know, Soul Pepper does the a Christmas Carol every year. I would see Shaft's Gallery yeah. every year. Yeah, well, that's been totally. it, when it was conceived. That was the concept was to have it be the storefront's Christmas show, you yeah. know? And so, yeah, so we're we're trying to bring it back. We're trying to bring it back. So if there's any funders listening <laughs> that want to produce a show, get yeah. a hold of me, Claire B at the storefront theater .com. <laughs> That's nice. Um, is there a long term plan to, to find obviously you want to find a space again? Yeah, so the space issue, it's just, it's more complicated than when we originally got the course, space. Yeah. So in order to um, pay everybody to have a sustainable business model, we really need to have a liquor license and a bar because mm. um, alcohol revenue will be generating like a quarter of our um, over, overall operating budget. Wait, sorry, do actors drink? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Artists and actors, what? Um, so it's a matter of coming up with um, the capital costs mm -hmm. that it will mm -hmm. cost to yeah. purchase either um, a liquor license. So if you're like taking over an old space, then mm -hmm. you have to pay, usually it's about $50,000 to adopt somebody else's liquor mm -hmm. license. Or it's a matter of retrofitting like an old storefront and putting the bar in, which right. of course, then you have to meet uh, Ontario building code, you right. have to meet uh, licensing mm -hmm. and bylaw mm -hmm. uh, regulations. So it's just, it's, it's not as, unfortunately, because 
we want to get paid and, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. that kind of thing. It can't happen as fast as of I think course, the community yeah. wants it to happen. Well, the community wants it to happen yesterday. I it's know. Like, like, we've I lost know. this space. We've lost other spaces and Storefront mm-hmm. produced so much good work. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen the, the Staircase Theater in Hamilton? I haven't, but I've heard lots about it, actually. Which is like exactly what you're describing. Yeah. So, yeah. If only there was a space like that. Yeah, and we're looking for, like, uh, Chicago has some great models that we're looking at as well, Mm -hmm. sort of um, emulating that. And, uh, you know, Unit 102 just opened a new space, Unit 102 and Leroy Street Theater. They just opened a new space in Parkdale, so they're back on the map. I did not know that. Yeah. Me neither. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great. It's, like, uh, just uh, just east of Queen and Sororan. Nice. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. great. Um, back to Divine. Mm-hmm. You, you've told me about your characters, uh, or you've told me the names of your characters. Mm-hmm, what can mm-hmm. you tell me about the characters that you play? Well, um, Penn is a lost soul and paying for the sins of her father. And she's trying to right her wrongs and hopefully save humanity. Fuck, that's such a Western <laughs> You're saying that, I'm like, yep. She's yeah. the woman with no name. Yeah. That's it. That is so awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Uh, Marion is the bartendress. <laughs> there's no water, but there's, don't worry, there's whiskey still. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Um, she's, she's sassy and fun, and but she's also one of the only characters in a skirt. So she's a little more of the femme side of things. Mm-hmm. Um and there may or may not be some chemistry between Penn and mm-hmm. Marion. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about the importance of the of everybody involved in this show being a woman? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, did it ever consider not doing that, or how did it come about that you made sure that that's how it was going to work? Uh, well, it happened that everybody who was the best in the auditions for the parts were women. Mm-hmm. And so once we had that conversation, myself and the playwright and the associate director, um, we decided that we were going to make the conscious choice to cast women also in sort of rebellion to the genre itself, which normally is a real male dominated Mm -hmm. male gaze sort of um, genre. Um, And then I thought to myself, okay, well, if we're putting together a company of women, wouldn't it be interesting, an interesting experiment to also put together the crew and the design team mm-hmm. of women and see if we can create just a different sort of experience for all of us involved? Because, you know, theater is still a male-dominated, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, performance art. Yeah. And so I was just, I selfishly, like, I was just kind of like, if I get to put together the team, I'm like, oh, I just want to work with a bunch of, like, ladies. Like, <laughs> like will that change the atmosphere? Like, it's hard to say because I, I don't really, it's been such a positive experience. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't know if it, how it would have been different if we had mm-hmm. men in the room necessarily. Um, but I just, I think of, like, the patriarchy as sort of being, like, this, like, top-down sort of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so the director is, like, at the top of the pyramid and everyone else sort of falls under. And for me, it's definitely, I've been approaching the play more of, like, a cyclical, like, um, yeah, collaborative mm-hmm. approach. So it's not my way, the highway kind of thing. And everybody has, I really wanted to make sure everybody had a voice mm-hmm. in the room mm-hmm. because that was really important. The women felt like they had voices. I mean, obviously you can't compare how this play would be if there were if there were men in the room but you've been involved with other shows where where there's the mix of men and possibly more men than women mm-hmm. how does it feel in the rehearsal hall to just aside from the the communal nature of the rehearsal process mm-hmm. is it a different feeling in the room than mm-hmm. when than when there are there are men present i have to say i haven't been that conscious of it really it's kind of just like what it is mm-hmm. um but I do feel heard more. Yeah. And it's not that in every room with a man, I don't feel heard. Like mm. people are people, but we and me specifically have a tendency to like shy away from mm. being assertive or feeling like you can speak up about certain things or yeah. Mm. But I haven't really like consciously just kind of been like, these are the people that I'm working mm. with and they're all lovely. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, at the beginning of this process, I had um, my own thoughts about it, um, whether it would be difficult um, to work with a cast of all women, cast and crew. Um, 
not that I was worried about it, but it did come to my mind mm -hmm. just what it would be like because yeah. I've never I've never worked um, with all all lady cast and mm -hmm. crew and but it has been a positive experience and um, collaborative and yeah I do feel heard mm -hmm. as well. It's definitely been like in empowering yeah especially um being getting to do a bunch of fight choreography oh that's amazing and stage combat yeah. which typically we don't get to do as much mm -hmm. or we don't get to do the like <laughs> really fun stuff of yeah. it as yeah. much obviously it happens but so it's it, it's been really like it's like and to be on stage with 10 women just yeah, like, like, yeah. and it's like real asses. brawl yeah. it's real brawl it's yeah. not silly bitch slaps no, yeah or whatever yeah it's real like punches yeah. and headbutts nice yeah. yeah it's next level how did you like have you, have you done a lot of stage combat before were you, did you come in with with like no experience at it i've thrown a punch for sure yeah but not like this okay yeah i've this... uh gotten thrown and yeah <laughs> gotten slapped mm -hmm. yeah thrown to the ground and stuff and i've done some like sword play kind of for fun or for whatever but definitely not this, not like this. level yeah yeah we have an amazing fight choreographer named louisa zoo yeah mm -hmm. she's great. and she's coming in we have a great fight captain who's in in the production named mm -hmm. annie annie yao and uh and so their collaboration has been awesome, just mm -hmm. keeping us all on our toes. And Louisa is like a ball of energy and just so tough. Yeah. Like she's so tough. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's been, I am like, like really excited about all the fights. <laughs> like when we do fight day, I'm like, ah! yeah. <laughs> yeah. fight each other. Well, you know? It's also when it comes together, right? It's yeah. also yeah. when it comes together. Um, were you nervous going into the fights? I was nervous. I was nervous about the safety. Okay. But not nervous about doing mm. it. I was ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and ready. Yeah. Couldn't wait. Um, but Louisa and Annie have been very diligent. And mm. uh, they supervise... Well, Annie supervises our fights. Uh, we have fight calls almost every day. Mm. And um, I, I feel safe. And yeah. I always check in with my partner who I'm punching. <laughs> yeah. Um, whether or not she feels safe as well. So that's been, I'm glad that that mm -hmm. note has been pushed. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so important. Yeah, of course. And mm -hmm. I, I think I, if I can just speak to that conscientious energy, like, I know there are, there are a lot of um, male actors who are that conscientious, but I feel like women do have almost like an extra sensory awareness mm -hmm. and commitment to the other people's well-being mm -hmm. in a way that sometimes with a mixed cast, mm -hmm. I find that... Um, different people's like egos can kind of come up and down oh, and yeah. their wants and needs can kind of come to the forefront. Whereas I really feel like there's a symbiosis within the group itself mm -hmm. where everybody is concerned and caring for each other, mm -hmm. which maybe is like, um, maybe is like a, a gender sort of norm that I want to throw out the window to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but it is, it, it's kindness and it's, it's yeah. yeah, compassionate. When you're doing fight choreography though, when you're doing stage combat, that kind of thing is, is really important though. Mm -hmm. You don't want like egos or, or uh, machismo getting in the way and like somebody getting hurt. Yeah. Because it's so easy for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Of course. So uh, I'd rather fight with chicks because <laughs> yeah. come on. Yeah. Uh, most guys will be like, because they don't mind if the, if the, sometimes if it's, if it's not really careful, they don't mind if that punch goes a little close yeah you know? yeah there can be a little bit more of that renegade energy mm -hmm. and not to say that that doesn't influence like we have that energy in spades as mm -hmm. a cast but it's just in this particular you know with the fights like i really do feel like there yeah. is that attention to detail mm -hmm. which is great mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how how has it been mixing because a lot of times you know if somebody says to me this is a, a peace exploring environmental i do roll my eyes a little bit mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i have sometimes i will i have preconceived notions so taking that and marrying it to the western stroke of genius by the way. <laughs> yeah <laughs> natalie Fragia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because, Big ups. because uh, you know you if you start off by saying we're going to talk about the the environment people oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah put the, put the western in there um but how has it been confronting the issue alongside of the the fiction I mean, what I just love so much about this play is that it's like 
it is a fiction play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like you could really come into it with no preconceived notion mm-hmm. that it that we're actually trying to attack any issue at all, but you could come away from it, I think, be questioning and mm-hmm. being like, "Huh, what if? that took place in Ontario?" Mm-hmm. Whoa, what if we did run out of water? And then exactly. hopefully we have, I mean, I know we do, but hopefully the audience member can look at the resources that we provide mm-hmm. um, from our our different uh, environmental partners to maybe try to make a conscious decision in their lives to change, you know, change the way that they're behaving. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's like how I see the marrying happen. Um, But what was your question? Because I feel like I I think, I think you, I think you answered it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's not like, it's not an issue. It's not an issue Mm -hmm. at all. It's like, it's like a Harry Potter, like just like the given circumstance that just is, there's no time really spent talking. There's hints and stuff, but it's not like this happened because this evil corporation, (laughs) this, you know what I mean? It's just like, Oh, we're in the action. There's this sort of other like spiritual level to Mm -hmm. it at the same time. And the Western fantastical, fantastical. Yeah. That's more what I mean. And of course the, what you're describing is exactly what I am afraid of when somebody, you know, it right. sounds like it's going to be an issue. Play right. We're going, to, yeah. we're going to take a sledgehammer and hit me over the head. <laughs> yeah. But this sounds like just kind of fun. It's super yeah. fun. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, so have you guys uh, done Summerworks productions before? No. no? I have never. Nope. Time. I have. Um, what have you What have you done before? Um, we did a show called The Sad and Cautionary Tale of Smack-Headed Peter a couple of years ago. Um, oh. Yeah. You probably... And didn't, didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. It was great. We're just some amazing actors. Um, mm. But that was that was a few years ago, and I haven't done anything since. Mm. Yeah. Did you direct that? No, I was an actor. In oh, it. lovely. Yeah, I played a prostitute who mm. who actually gets killed by her boyfriend. So Shit. it's kind of a different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <polar opposite. laughs> yeah. Um. So how do you like? What's the the summer works experience? I mean, no, it hasn't. The the mm-hmm. festival hasn't started yet. But you know, as as you get closer to it, there's always, you know, you sort of get a sense of, of, of how it's like, how's the experience been so far? Uh, for me, it's been really great because mm-hmm. uh, the executive direct, the artistic executive of Summerworks, Laura Nanny, is very supportive of the project. I feel like mm-hmm. she is taking, her and her team are taking a really important stance, which is caring for the artists and caring for the artistry mm-hmm. of the projects themselves. So I felt very supportive supported through the process they've act, they've been very good with um teaching um us about producing which is mm-hmm. great marketing how to fundraise um the steps along the way have been really clear so whatever they're doing i'm very impressed and i hope mm-hmm. that they i hope that it shows through box office revenue for every company and uh just for audience yeah absolutely yeah it's very absolutely. organized it's important to be uh supportive in that way in a festival mm-hmm. um, to make sure that everybody has the tools that they need because a lot of times people come in and they don't necessarily mm-hmm. have those yeah 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 yeah. you know marketing it's one of those things like they never tell us about that in theater school no, no. I know <laughs> and they or should or producing they, should. they don't yeah. tell us about that that's either. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, did you Claire did you learn producing like you learned on the job uh, yeah yeah to the fire with Star Friend yeah I was I actually produced um a like uh, the first play that I wrote uh, in 2012. And so I self-produced that with a friend of mine, uh, Brett Haynes. And then working at Storefront, I just learned, picked up more and more and more about producing, mm-hmm. more and more, more about marketing, um, how to access audiences. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, it was like a crash course, essentially. And it mm-hmm. still has been because we're still, I'm still figuring stuff out, like working with a production manager who, you know, who keeps the money, who, you know, how the budget is disseminated, all mm-hmm. that stuff. It's still... Still a learning curve. I think we've done a good job, though, for uh, pre- press mm-hmm. and, um, mm-hmm. you know, graphic design. And so I have a – now I have an idea of, like, how early the rollouts need to be and everything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's going well. Yeah. I wish they would teach that stuff in, in, in theater school. Totally. They really yeah. must. Well, because yeah. it's become more part of the – trajectory of a theater career mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. produce your own work. And see, even in my, like, arts management, co- like, certificate, it was, half of them was that you just had to take all these business courses. But, of course, those are for multi-gajillion dollar corporations mm-hmm. and how to run those. And I don't know or care. And, like, even the arts management was useful, but it was like how to run the Stratford Festival. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, not there yet. No. Like, <laughs> what about the rest of us that are, like, 
very small or yeah. getting more to medium? And what's that step like for me personally going from my own like little theater company mm -hmm. with a few friends that did a few good shows to going to the storefront, which was another step up. And there were more hands in the pot and more mm -hmm. structures. We were figuring out the structure in place. And yeah, maybe we could teach them. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we could. Maybe yeah. You should. Yeah, they really I mean, should teach it. Because those are those are things that, that we need. I mean, you should probably offer a course in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um there's so many things that I wanted to talk about today. Um if there was a, something that you guys wanted somebody to take away from Divine, uh whether it's the message, whether it's um the all women uh production team and cast whether it's, um, damn, I just had a good time. Like, is there anything that you would want people to take away from it? Oof. I, personally, I just want people to be like, that was fucking so cool. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, yeah. I want them to take their program home with them and be like, what was that? And then <laughs> read the playwright note mm -hmm. or look at our partners. Mm hmm and think about water and think about their experience with water mm -hmm. and you know oh i went to lake ontario last week or i went to sandbanks or i went to georgian bay mm -hmm. what would that be like if we didn't have any water mm -hmm. and then have them be really conscious of that and and look into some of the 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 more you know the the national issues that we should really be considering, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. about our groundwater, about the sale of our groundwater to corporations, about uh, lack of regulations around polluting mm -hmm. our, our fresh fresh bodies of water, mm. um, you know, our own consumption of water bottles, you know, that kind of thing. That's definitely something for me that I've taken away from this play. Yeah. Like I don't buy water bottles, bottles of water anymore. Mm. <laughs> what about you guys? Education through entertainment. Mm. Yeah. 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 Slip it in there. Leave super entertained. Go home a little mm -hmm. with a little bit more knowledge than you came in with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what would make my heart smile? It's kind of, I was thinking about this with Huxley, but like seeing some little girl yeah. coming out and going, yeah, hell, like, yeah. Come here, come here, come here. and like, yeah. I can be the hero too. Yeah. yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. 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 Kind of the, like the Wonder Woman, the one, I was exactly. Say the Wonder Woman effect, yeah. yeah. Or little boy, or whatever. Or boy, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or that we don't have to think about, like, that it doesn't have to be a thing. That it's all women. Like, mm. how many plays are all men? And it's just what it it's is. It's just what it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but that's because so many of the plays are all men, and that's what it is. Right. That's that, the norm. Yeah. Right. But we yeah. should talk about this like it's the norm. Right. Hopefully, one day. Mm -hmm. We don't have to so. have a conversation. Yeah, well, it exactly. has to be a thing that we, that we point out. Exactly. Not to say all women. Yeah. But I think it's important that we do now. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yes. Well, I know that you guys have to, so you have to go to work. So thanks so much for talking with me today. It's been a lot Thank of fun. You. Thank you. Thank you.